1984 in Atlanta proved to be a year of ups and downs for the Braves, a year in which the team demonstrated an uncommon resilience. Ready to rebound, the story of the 1984 Atlanta Braves. Spring training. In the wake of 1983's second place finish, the Atlanta Braves were ready to rebound as they turned their sights toward the top of the Western Division. As the Braves opened their training camp in West Palm Beach, Florida, they did so with a collection of familiar names that had turned the team into a Western Division power. Now, in 1984, those familiar players would be instrumental in Atlanta's efforts to recapture the flag. The pitching staff seemed to be on solid ground, especially with Len Barker available from the start. Coupled with a formidable offense, the Braves were ready to swing into action, led by the return of their slugging captain, Bob Horner. But while the Braves were looking ahead to the pennant chase, something was already chasing them. The injuries. The Braves limped out of spring training with three discouraging injuries in their last week in Florida. But they were ready to rebound as the team headed north for the start of the season hoping to duplicate their record-setting start of recent years. The attention of the city turned towards Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, where anticipation was high. A crowd of 34,000 turned out on a threatening night to get their first look at the 1984 model of America's team, whose chief concern was getting off to their third consecutive hot start. But there wasn't anything hot about the Braves' start this year, as they lost eight of their first 11 games. The blue skies of Florida had turned into the rainy nights of Georgia. Well, it's cloudy in the morning. Gonna be raining in the afternoon. Cloudy in the morning. And it's gonna be raining in the afternoon. If you don't like this rainy weather, you better pack your bags and move. Rain, 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 keep a falling. Falling round my window pane. Rain, 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 keep a falling. Falling round my window pane. seen so much rainy weather I guess I'll never see the sun again there was however one bright spot in the cruel month of April one player who continually picked the Braves up when they were down Claude L. Washington by the end of the month Washington was among the league leaders in seven offensive categories and it was his play that turned the Braves on early in the year. In 1984, Claudel kept opposing defenses on the skids with 21 stolen bases and a career-high 17 home runs, including a league-high six leading off the game for the Braves. Now that's the way to start things up.
While Washington jump-started his stall ball club, the Braves' front office continued its search for the right spark to ignite the team. Trevino, of course, uh, after he first arrived, uh, got hot with the bat, and uh, we knew and uh, liked his uh, receiving and throwing ability, and we just felt that adding uh, Trevino would, uh, would give us two catches that we could really depend on. Uh, that's what we really wanted from him. But the Braves got even more than they expected from their new acquisition. Positioning himself behind the plate, Trevino contributed instantly. In his first eight games, the Braves pitchers ran off eight straight wins. When Trevino stepped to the plate, he was full of surprises. Hit toward left center field. I don't believe anybody's going to catch up to it. Nope. One run in. Two runs in. And Trevino's done it again. He just picked up the Braves again. The Braves' outlook brightened with Trevino's continued heroics. The Pirates lead at 8 7. The Braves need a hit to win it. The 1 1. Line drive. Face hit. Here comes Cordell. The Braves win. The Braves win. Braves win became a familiar refrain in Atlanta as the gloom of April turned into the bloom of May. And when the month was over, the Braves had enjoyed their second best May in the last 10 years. The Braves were flying high, and their confidence was soaring. They had lifted themselves up into the race, and the fans responded to the rebounding Braves by flocking to Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. Tickets to a game were as hot as the Braves themselves. Each day on the field, it seemed a different player rose up to light the fire. is on the way. He's stuck in that Braves win. That's it deep to right field. It is high. It is far. It is gone. Home run. Braves win. Pascual Perez was one reason the Braves were able to rebound from their poor start. After missing the first six weeks of the season, Perez came back to win four of his first five games and finished the season with 14 wins. Rick Mailer also helped the team rebound in May by winning five straight games. It seemed that every time Mailer picked up a ball, the Braves picked up a win as he emerged as the most consistent pitcher on the staff with a 3.12 ERA. The Braves had a stable of strong-arm pitchers, one of which was Len Barker. Although injuries limited his playing time, Barker still pitched in with seven victories. The Braves also found a workhorse in Rick Camp, who worked as both a starter and reliever in 1984 and won eight games with a 3.27 ERA. Like the team, Craig McMurtry also started slowly, but the lanky Texan rebounded at season's end with an outstanding 1.72 ERA over his last five starts. By the end of May, the Braves had charged into a first place tie with the San Diego Padres. But bright hopes were darkened by the sound of the siren as injuries once again put holes in Atlanta's lineup. 
The biggest hole was left by the loss of Bob Horner for the season. But rather than pack it in, the Braves packed their bags and hit the road. First stop, Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, where the Braves were ready to rebound yet again. Glenn Hubbard provided the spark, first with his bat, and then with his glove, as his gritty determination inspired the whole team. Atlanta swept the five-game series by outscoring the Reds 31-9. The Braves had sailed into first place, and as they cruised out to San Francisco, they had a golden opportunity to expand their lead as the hottest team in the West. And the Braves stayed hot against the Giants, sweeping all three games, thanks to a resurgent bullpen that picked up the starters any time they faltered. Donnie Moore emerged as a Braves right-handed stopper. In 1984, Moore led the Braves with 16 saves, four more than his career total prior to the beginning of the year. The Braves also received additional bullpen support from Steve Bedrosian. In 1984, Bedrosian had 81 strikeouts in 83 innings, a 2.37 ERA, and at one point during the year, a string of 19 and one-third consecutive scoreless innings. The Braves were in the fast lane with their road win streak at eight, when they motored to Dodger Stadium for a showdown. This time, the muscle came from a pumped-up Chris Chambliss, who went three for five with four RBIs to lead the Braves to their ninth straight win. And Chambliss to career hit number 2,000, which he collected later in the season. Rafael Ramirez was also instrumental in Atlanta's streaking success as he batted 304 for the first half of the season on the strength of 100 hits. His remarkable first half earned him a trip to the All-Star Game in San Francisco. After climbing back repeatedly from injuries and adversity, the Braves were battling for the top of the West as baseball took its mid-season summer vacation. This time, the site was Candlestick Park, a splendid setting for the 55th All-Star Classic. As the National League All-Stars prepared to avenge their loss of the previous season, they did so with the help of three distinguished members of America's team. Waddell Washington was making his second All-Star appearance, while Rafael Ramirez made his first. Making his third consecutive start in center field was the National League's two-time most valuable player, Dale Murphy, whose dedication to the game is reflected in his unique preparation for the sport he plays so well. You go up there thinking positively and what you're supposed to do and think about being aggressive. I strike out a lot. Uh, I don't like to strike out any more than anyone else. You got to create that confidence within yourself. The only way you get your confidence is by trying things. So I would like to dive once in a while, and, and I found that if you dive once in a while, you catch it. I feel extra special if I get a chance to do something in the outfield to help the team. I think every player likes to, to be in a situation where he has a chance to win the game. In 1984, Murphy found himself in that position countless times, and countless times he came through. His 100 RBIs and 13 game-winning hits were both team highs. Here's the 3-0 pitch inside, and throws him up for Murphy. The bases are loaded. There's one man out. We're in the bottom half of the ninth inning of a 2-2 game.
Throughout his career, Murphy has maintained that his success comes not only from his natural talents, but from his willingness to work hard as well. When you're in a situation where you have the opportunity to win the game with uh, one swing of the bat, you know, your concentration can just, uh, even with the crowd yelling and all the things that are going on, um, with experience you can learn to get that out of your mind and just focus on the ball coming in and then making contact. I think uh, that's the great thing about baseball is, is you know, the team wins and everything about like that, but uh, there's always that individual uh, competition between the pitcher and the hitter, and, and I think that's what everybody likes to see. Murphy has continually won that competition, and the 84 All-Star Game was no exception. Just ask Willie Hernandez, the 84 American League Cy Young Award winner, who lost his personal competition with the National League's home run champ. With three consecutive seasons of 36 home runs, Atlanta fans have come to expect this kind of consistency from Murphy. He's unquestionably the latest in a long line of legendary brave home run hitters. A line that includes Hall of Famer Eddie Matthews and the most prolific home run hitter in baseball history, Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron might have had his most memorable moment in Atlanta, but his career as a brave began in Milwaukee in 1954. It was there that Aaron was inserted into the Braves lineup soon after he began to lead the league in home runs year after year. Starting in 1955, Aaron hit at least 20 home runs for 20 straight years, a mark of consistency that helped him reach the Hall of Fame. Aaron had an almost uncanny ability to relax at the plate, and his seemingly effortless swing and quick snap of the wrist generated awesome power. Although the Braves changed cities in 1966, the move from Milwaukee to Atlanta did nothing to change Hammer and Hank's sweet swing. Twenty years after his rookie season on April 8, 1974, Aaron swung past the Babe with home run number 715. A moment frozen forever in Atlanta Braves history. Exactly 10 years later to the day, the Braves remembered that momentous occasion with a reenactment of that record-breaking home run. Atlanta fans came to salute Aaron, and Aaron saluted them right back. <laughs> Hank Aaron. A legend for all time. But for Atlanta fans, even the pleasant memories of yesterday were chased away by the realities of today. Throughout the summer, Braves' woes mounted steadily as new names found their way onto an already lengthening injury list. But once again, the Braves were ready to rebound, this time led by a pair of 23-year-olds, Brad Kamensk and Gerald Perry who seem to be playing their own game of one-upsmanship. In his first full Major League season, Perry showed that he could more than handle Major League pitching. And his performance on September 10th was an indication of that. On that day, Perry had three hits and five RBIs, including a double and a home run. Perry's contributions continued in the field as well, where he showed sure-handed finesse at first base. All signs indicate a promising and productive future for Brad Kamensk also. In 1984, Kamensk showed flashes of the pure power that should make him a home run threat for many years to come.
like Perry, Kamensk also provided power and speed as he stole 18 bases in 25 attempts. Aside from Kamensk and Perry, other newcomers to the Braves lineup during the 84 season included Paul Runge. Called up from Richmond, he impressed Braves fans by playing several infield positions while swinging with consistency at the plate. Paul Zavella was also called up to the Braves after achieving all-star status at Richmond. And he handled a transition with style both in the field and at the plate. Young Braves on the mound included Jeff Dedman, who appeared in 54 games during the 84 season, second most on the team. Another Richmond graduate was Zane Smith, who went to the head of the class in his big league debut on September 10th by outpitching old Professor Nolan Ryan with a 3-1 win in Houston's Astrodome. Finally, there was Richmond standout Milt Thompson, one of the Braves' brightest young stars. In just 25 Major League games, Thompson had 30 hits for a 303 average and electrified Atlanta fans with his spectacular defense. Thompson also scored 16 runs and showed his speed by stealing 14 bases. Thompson is just one of 19 Braves developed at Richmond under the expert eye of a longtime member of the Braves family who was tapped at season's end to be the team's new manager in 1985. Thank you very much for uh, coming today. I will uh, announce that uh, Eddie Haas is the new manager of the Atlanta Braves. Well, it's an honor to manage uh, any major league ball club, but it's a special honor to manage what I consider um, one of the top organizations in baseball. And of course, that's the Atlanta Braves. And we just hope that uh, we can make the dream country here in Atlanta. That dream could be closer to a reality with the news of some significant postseason acquisitions. With the signing of bullpen ace Bruce Souter, the premier relief pitcher in the National League, the Braves are set on the mound for a resounding rebound in 85. Souter comes fresh from a super season with St. Louis in which he set a league record with 45 saves. I think uh, this man here and his willingness to keep building ball clubs here, the, the excellence of the Braves ball club already. Uh, plus, I want to watch Dale Murphy play every day. He'll watch Dale Murphy, and he'll often pitch to Rick Cerrone, acquired from the New York Yankees to bolster the backstop position. Cerrone brings an all-out effort and gritty determination to the job. As the Braves enter their 20th season in Atlanta, fans can expect a rebounding effort in 1985. With a host of bright young stars, strong acquisitions, and a new manager, the Braves are ready to rebound and continue the tradition that's grown through the years. I swear we've been through everything there is. Can't imagine anything we've missed. Can't imagine anything the two of us can't do. Through the years, through all the good and bad, I know 